Hi guys! So really quickly before we start the vlog, I just wanted to let you know that I currently have an open giveaway for a copy of First Aid for the USMLE Step 1 open on my channel. I will link the video that you need to go to in order to be able to enter down below and in the little eye up there. It's my how to budget for medical school video and check out the rules over there but all you have to do is comment on that video. You can comment anything you like and include your Instagram username handle so that I can contact you and you could be entered for a chance to win a copy of that book. So I wanted to let you know that that is still available and will be open until July 11th. And please only enter if you are in the US. It's a US only giveaway. Sorry if you're international. Um, hopefully I'll be able to do some international giveaways in the future. But for now, this is what I'm able to do. So like I said, go over there to enter and let's go ahead and get into today's vlog. Good morning everyone, or I guess I should say good afternoon because it's already 12 o'clock. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name's Ariella and I make videos about medical school and my life as a second year medical student. Let me put this down. So if you guys saw my last vlog, we actually just moved into a new apartment. And so today is day two of being here after moving. We're still very sore from walking up and down three flights of stairs and then walking up and down one flight of stairs here. But I have just been working on unpacking all morning, helping my boyfriend, and then also working on some Anki cards. So yesterday I took a lot of time to just sit and do Anki rather than unpack because I needed to get caught up from the weekend. So I was able to get myself totally caught up, but my reviews are definitely in the larger amounts than they were before. So I think yesterday I did over a thousand cards, which was the first time that I ever technically did more than a thousand cards. Today I only had 770 review cards and then I've upped it to 200 new cards a day just so that I can try and catch up and make up for some of that time that I lost. Probably sometime starting next week I will make a like do a calculation and see exactly how many cards I have to do in order to be done by the beginning of second year. But for now I just kind of want to take it easy and relax a little bit in the new apartment. So I wanted to show you guys I have basically completed my little desk area up here in the loft. If if you want a little apartment tour, I would go back to Wednesday's video and check that out because I have the entire empty apartment tour on there. But I wanted to show you how my loft is turning out and what everything is looking like. All right, so here are the stairs leading up to the loft. And then if you head to the right, there's actually a storage area. So I'm keeping some of my boyfriend's guitar cases and just boxes and things. And then if you head over to the left, you get to my little loft area. So first, in the corner we have an extension cord and then I'm just keeping my yoga stuff up here for now so then we turn and here's the entire desk area so first up I've got a couple bags that I need to unpack this is just my school bag and then this bag has like my hard drive and my switch accessories and things like that. Like I said, this chair we already had, but this blanket is a Tommy Bahama blanket that we got at Home Goods that I feel like fits really well. It kind of matches the carpet or the rug up here a little bit. All right, so here's the overview of the desk area without the, the chair. This carpet, like I said, is from Walmart. It's actually just an accent rug, but I thought that the colors looked really nice with the kind of overall theme that we're going for in this apartment. And then I also have a little trash can from Home Goods, 
These three different fake plants are all from Home Goods. I have a lamp back there that my boyfriend already owned, so I just kept it there because it goes with the desk nicely. So the desk is also from Walmart. It's a mainstays desk, I believe. When my boyfriend was building it, he said that it had a different name on it. So what I'm assuming happened is that Walmart probably buys it from a wholesaler and the wholesaler brand is different. He said that it was actually felt a little bit better quality than a normal Walmart desk did. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'll link it below if I can find it. Um, it's just a very simple desk. It's got a small drawer here, which I have not filled at all. It kind of sticks when it closes, but totally fine. Probably gonna keep this desk surface relatively open. And then if you come down here, you'll see that I have snaked the extension cord and kind of hidden it in the corner. So I have the laptop plug and also the lamp plug in there. I don't leave anything plugged in overnight or when I'm not around because those small little plugs are not designed to be surge protectors. So I don't leave any expensive electronics plugged in if I think it's gonna be unsafe for them. But for now, this will work. I'll probably switch it out for a white one that is a surge protector shortly, but yeah, that's my whole desk setup. I actually really like the way it's looking up here and I can't decide if I wanna bring the desk back with me and have like a secondary study area in my apartment when I go back to medical school or if I wanna leave it here and have a study area for here when I come visit my boyfriend. So I'll have to make that decision eventually, but for now I'm going to pound through some Anki cards and then I think we're gonna to go to the grocery store because our fridge is almost completely empty. One last thing. I wanted to show you guys that I've actually been using a Joy-Con to do my Anki cards with so I'm going to show you how I set that up. It has absolutely changed the game for doing Anki cards for me. It's just a lot more convenient than using the space bar and when you're doing thousands of these cards a day, any little convenience that I can get, I'm going to work with. So let me show you how I did that. So I'm going to initiate a new pairing with the right-sided controller, but I do prefer to use the left and I'll explain why that is in a little bit. Check out the Joy-Con right that would like to connect. Then I downloaded this app, Enjoyable. So when your item is connected to Bluetooth, it will automatically show up in Enjoyable. So here you can see I have the Joy-Con right that has shown up. And then what you do is you press whatever key you would like to use and assign a keyboard value. So let's say I want to assign the space bar to A. So I click A, it automatically takes me to button one, which is A, then I head over to the assign value and I will press the spacebar key and now whenever I use the A button this works as a spacebar. So now let's say because I'm using Anki I also want to have a button for the number one because that's what you use when you get a card wrong. So let's make that Y. So I will click the Y button that takes me automatically to button four and then again press a key and I click the number one on my keyboard and now the button Y on the Joy-Con is assigned to be one. So I can open up Anki now and let's answer this question. So the left ventricle compensates for increased afterload by blank in order to decrease wall tension. So I know the answer to this is hypertrophy or increase in thickness. So I'm going to hit spacebar to reveal the answer or A to reveal the answer. And I see thickening or hypertrophying. And so I got that right. So I will click A to assign it as good or spacebar. In Anki, if you didn't know, the spacebar is automatically set to click good. So now we've come up to a question that I don't exactly know the answer to. The C wave on the jugular venous pulse corresponds to blank. So I'm going to click the spacebar to reveal the answer. Right ventricle contraction. So I did not know that answer, so now I'm going to click Y or the one button because we've assigned the Y to be one and that will put the card back in to be reviewed later. So that's how I've been using the Joy-Con to do my note cards lately, and I found that it's a lot easier than having to keep your arms up on the desk or on the laptop the entire time. It almost feels like you're playing a game when you do the note cards with this, which I find really fun and just a lot more comfortable. So I like using these, and actually what I really prefer doing is I prefer to hold this in my left hand and then use my right hand to take any notes or do any flipping through first stayed if I get a question wrong. So that's why I prefer to use the left Joy-Con. This also works if you want to use like a PS4 controller or an Xbox controller or really any controller that's meant for gaming. You can also order like a little $14 Amazon one-handed gaming thing that acts like a Joy-Con. But if you already have the Joy-Cons, if you have a Nintendo Switch, I highly recommend this. They tend to work really well and they 
perform very seamlessly with the Mac laptops. I don't know how this would be different if you used Windows, but I'm sure it's probably the same process and it's pretty easy to work around. I'm just gonna set up here and do a bunch of note cards and then I'll check in with you guys when we do something different. So we've just gone to the pet store and the grocery store. Unfortunately, the thing that I thought was gonna be exciting and that I was gonna vlog was us getting an aquarium. So one of my like hobbies is watching the aquarist hobby on YouTube. I really enjoy it and I love fish tanks. So I was going to go to the store to start cycling a five gallon tank for a betta fish today. However, Basically every pet store was sold out of five gallon tanks, so we couldn't find any. So I'm just gonna go online and order everything I need. Yeah, right now I'm just cooking some chicken tacos and then while I wait for my boyfriend to come home, I'm gonna research the aquarium and probably order stuff for it online. And then there's a local pet store that we might get our betta fish from, so. I still have cards to do tonight, unfortunately, but we're just pounding through them. I've kind of started spreading them out throughout my day rather than doing them all in the morning just because things get busy and sometimes I have to leave in the morning, so. That's what we've been doing. Unfortunately, it was not as exciting of a vlog as I thought it was gonna be, but I'll show you like the rest of the night. We just had dinner. I ended up making an order on Amazon and I also ordered a fish tank from PetSmart. I don't normally try and shop at the big chain pet stores, but the five gallon tank that I wanted was sold out literally everywhere. I just wanted a plain five gallon tank that would take a standard filter. But unfortunately, the only ones that were available online were like the, what's the word? Like proprietary ones where it's a unique design. So it needs a unique filter. Those tend to be a lot more expensive. So I will show you what I got for the tank now. I'm just going in order of how they're listed on my order. It was one big order, but I think they're shipping in separate packages. So we've got the blood worms as a beta treat. You give these very infrequently. They're not their normal food. It's just a special thing to mix it up a little. I also got this net that has um, more of like a soft mesh instead of that like hard plasticky mesh. Betas have very delicate fins. And so you wanna make sure that anything that you buy that's gonna be touching them isn't going to rip. So that means your net that you're using to catch them. That means any plants or fake plants that you're putting in the aquarium or rocks or wood or anything like that. All of those need to have relatively smooth surfaces. Otherwise your betta fish will tear their fins. So I got this electric siphon because this one wasn't that much more expensive than the normal like physical siphon. So we'll see how well this works. Um, I also just got a little algae scraper, some Gorilla Glue that's safe to put in planted tanks so that way I can adhere the plants to whatever surface that I want them to sit on. Last thing I got was this high protein beta food. Sorry, my phone died. That's it for my Amazon order. I think tomorrow PetSmart is going to email me and let me know when I can pick up the tank. And once I get the tank, I will probably go to the local pet store and I'm gonna pick up a heater, some of the rocks and wood that I'd like to have in addition to the substrate that I need in order to grow plants. It has to be like a, a nutrient substrate. I'll also get a bucket and some bacteria. And then while I have just the tank and the bacteria, I'll go ahead and start cycling it with the substrate and like the decorations and stuff. So that way 
in either a couple days time when this Amazon order comes or in about a week I can go to that local pet store and get a beta and we should be all set. It's 9.43 p.m. right now and I have 200 note cards to do tonight because I didn't set myself up for success today. But we made some really delicious chicken tacos that I'll show here. Our neighbor gave us some fresh cilantro from their garden and it was really delicious. So I'm just going to continue working on those note cards for the rest of the night, do some laundry, and that's gonna be it. So if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know down below and I will see you in the next one. Hi guys, so I technically ended the vlog off yesterday, but I wanted to show you what I got for my aquarium. I went out to the store today and grabbed some things for it and I wanted to show you like all that jazz if you're interested in it. So let me quickly go through what I got. So first up is the tank. I talked about this yesterday. Not usually a huge fan of buying from PetSmart or Petco or whatever, but this is the only five gallon that had this kind of filter and lid together. I really couldn't find any other five gallon tanks online at all. And since it's a beta fish and it's more likely to jump out of the tank, I wanted to get something with minimal uh -huh. opening on the lid. So that's what I got. It comes with all of these things. Again, the feeding door, very convenient for the beta fish so you don't have to take the entire lid off and risk them jumping out. All right, so additionally, I just got a 2.5 gallon bucket. I've got some filter cartridge refills. This is just what the box said to put in. We've got our first round of aquarium stone decor. These little vacation beta feeders that slowly dissolve over time just in case we need them. I got this like tree trunk looking thing for now. I think I'm gonna replace this with just a piece of natural driftwood, but again, the stores here didn't have anything, so I would need to order that online. So I just got this for now so that we have at least something to sit in there. I've got a compact heater preset to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. This is really important if you have a beta fish. They are tropical fish and they like warm water. They can survive in cold water, but they're not gonna be as bright or as active as they otherwise would be. So make sure you get a heater for your beta. Here's where the interesting stuff happens. So this is just a plant nutrients because I'm going to turn this into a planted tank. We've got these leaves. So something that's really important for betas as well are tannins, compound that naturally comes out of the dissolving of these leaves. And when you think about how betas live in the wild, they live in these small pools that often get dead leaves in them. And so this is good to help lower the pH of the water and just introduce some of those natural tannins. And these are huge by the way. I'll probably break them up into smaller pieces when I put them in. We've got aquarium stone number two for a little variety. Just some plant trimmers so that when I introduce the plants I can maintain them, make sure they don't overgrow. We've got some aquarium sand. This is the beneficial bacteria that I'm going to pour in the tank and let cycle for a bit before I add my beta fish. And then lastly this is the main substrate that I'm going to be using in the tank made out of clay. This is way too much much, but it's the smallest bag that it came in. And that's everything. So I think I'm going to go ahead and set up the tank and then maybe do a time lapse of the tank settling after I get everything like aquascaped. I'm sweaty.